So Ostrowski's theorem states that there are only two non-trivial distance metrics on the set of rational numbers. And those two distance metrics are the absolute value, which is what we're familiar with using, and the p-adic metric, which is what we talked about in my last video. I'll put a card here. Now, this statement wouldn't be that crazy if the requirements for a distance metric were really rigid, but it turns out that they're not. So let's go through them. So metrics have three requirements, and the first is simply that if the distance from x to y is zero, then x must equal y. And this makes sense. It would be weird if in our metric space the distance from one number to itself was non-zero. So we just require that if two numbers are the same, the distance between them is zero. Next, we require what's called symmetry. And that's that the distance from x to y equals the distance from y to x. Again, this is a pretty reasonable requirement. It'd be a little strange if within our system of numbers, distances work different one way from another. We usually just say, what's the difference between two numbers? So it shouldn't matter which way you're looking. And the third requirement is a little more interesting. It's that our metric must satisfy the triangle inequality. And the triangle inequality written out is that the distance from x to y must be less than or equal to the distance from x to some number z plus the distance from z to y. So what does this inequality mean? Well, it turns out that this inequality makes more sense if we look at it geometrically. So let's actually put ourselves in the complex plane to see the triangle inequality. Let's imagine that we have some pair of axes this is the real and the imaginary axis. And we've got some number sitting in our space. And we'll call this point x. Now, the distance from x to y is just the length of this line right here, right? And now let's pick some point, any other point in our space to be z. Maybe we'll pick z to be right here. All the triangle inequality states is that this distance here from x to y must be equal to or less than the distance from x to z plus the distance from z to y, right? Which makes sense. We can see that these two distances from x to z and z to y put together, lined up end to end, would definitely be longer than the distance from x to y. So what we're really just saying with the triangle inequality is that the sum of two sides of a triangle is longer than the third side. Now, real numbers that exist within the 1D number line obviously satisfy this inequality. In fact, they satisfy it at the point where that inequality is just an equality. For real numbers, we know that the distance from, say, 0 to 10 is equal to the distance from maybe 0 to 7 plus the distance from 7 to 10. That's just obviously true. So looking back at our three requirements for a metric space, they're all pretty reasonable. So you'd expect that for the set of all rational numbers, there'd be more than just two options. So we should talk about the trivial distance metric because Ostrowski's theorem just states that there's two non-trivial distance metrics, but we can pretty much ignore the trivial distance metric because it's just this, that the distance from x to y is equal to zero if x equals y, and one if x does not equal y. This clearly satisfies the three requirements of a distance metric, but kind of in a cheaty sort of way. Like, it doesn't tell us anything interesting about the distance between two numbers, but it technically satisfies all the requirements. So now let's see if we can understand, using the p-adic metric, why in a two-adic system, the sum of all positive powers of two approaches negative one. So let's look at the sum of all powers of two to the negative n, so that we remind ourselves what it looks like when something is converging. So normally, if I'm adding one plus a half 
plus a quarter, plus an eighth, and so on. We usually say that the distance between each of these truncated sums and two is getting smaller and smaller in a way that converges. So let's make sure we know what that looks like. The first truncated sum of this infinite sum here is just one, and the distance from one to two is just one. This is using the absolute value metric. Our next truncated sum is just one plus a half, so three halves, and the distance from three halves to two is just a half. Our next truncated sum is just one plus a half plus a fourth, so that's just seven fourths, and the distance from seven fourths to two is just a quarter. So we can see that as we continue this process, the distance from uh, each of our truncated sums to two is going down by decreasing powers of two to the n. And because this is the way in which we're approaching two, we know that eventually we'll converge on two. So let's look at now the sum of all positive powers of two, starting with one plus two plus four plus eight and so on. Now we already know that we're expecting this to be approaching negative one. So let's compare all of our truncated sums to negative one. Our first truncated sum is just one, and the two attic distance from one to negative one is just the two attic size of two. Remember, this is asking us how many times does two go into two? And two goes into two exactly one time. So the size of this distance is one over two to the one. Our next truncated sum is just three, and the distance from three to negative one, using the two attic metric, is just the size of four. And two goes into four two times, so this is equal to one over two squared, or just a fourth. And you may be starting to see the parallel between this and the sum of all negative powers of two. Just to go one step further, let's look at the truncated sum of one plus two plus four. This is seven. The distance from seven to negative one, using the two attic metric, is the two attic size of eight, and two goes into eight three times, so this is just one over two cubed, which equals an eighth. So clearly, each of these truncated sums is approaching negative one because all of our truncated sums are getting closer and closer to negative one. Also, interestingly, the p-adic notion of convergence is actually less strict than the absolute value notion of convergence. So with the absolute value metric, just because we are getting closer and closer to some number does not mean we converge on that number. For example, using the absolute value metric, if I add one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, I'm technically getting closer and closer to three, but I'm definitely not approaching three, I'm approaching two. However, in the p-adic metric, if your distance to some number is getting smaller and smaller for each successive term you add, then you are approaching that number by definition. So it's a lot easier to figure out whether or not you're converging on some number using the p-adic metric.